and welcome to the Banker's View from Cybos video series, looking at all the hot topics at this year's SWIFT User Conference in Geneva. I'm Joy McKnight, Transaction Banking and Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm here with Diane Reyes, who is Head of Global Liquidity and Cash Management at HSBC. Thanks so much for joining us today, Diane. Thank you, Joy. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the major challenges uh, that uh, banks, but also corporates, are facing in liquidity management? Yeah, I think from the corporate perspective, there's uh, three uh, challenges that our customers are facing. Uh, the first would be the economic environment. The second would be the regulatory environment. And the third would be the large cash holdings these days that they have. So let me clarify a bit. On the economic environment, I think we all know it's probably a record low interest environment. In fact, in some markets, we have negative interest. Um, and so for our customers, uh, and it's a sustained period now, they need to find ways to get value for their funds uh, in this type of an environment. So they're constantly thinking and searching around for, for yield. Uh, the regulatory environment almost has a secondary layering impact on that because with Basel III, uh, it's caused banks to rethink their views on core and non-core deposits. Um, and then the fact that our customers have so much cash on hand uh, makes it sort of a triple whammy, if you will. And we then have to help them find a way through these different uh, uh, challenges and, and solve their problems. So how is HSBC helping its clients navigate this uh, challenging environment? That's actually a very good question. HSBC's objective is to ensure we do help customers through this difficult period and help them through the evolving liquidity landscape. In fact, we recently added a new capability, which we call our Liquidity Investment Solution, the acronym all bankers have, LIS. Uh, this allows the uh, customer to invest in uh, AAA rated money market funds, so that gets them the yield that they need, and I think it's a big plus for them. But it does it as well in an off-balance sheet manner, so that's a big plus for us. So I like to call that a win-win for the corporate and the bank. And this way they can spend time on their investment strategy rather than worrying about executing or monitoring transactions. So I know HSBC is involved with SWIFT's Global Payments uh, Innovation Initiative, SWIFT GPI. Right. What do you think it's accomplished to date? Yes, this GPII, another acronym, JOY, is an important initiative for SWIFT. And what they're attacking, if you will, is the inefficiencies in cross-border payments. Uh, and they're looking to improve the speed of the cross-border payments, the transparency of those payments, and frankly, the settlement of those payments. So I sort of made an acronym there, STS, right? Um, so what they're saying is if we work together as a consortium of banks on the cross-border aspects of payments, uh, and we can get done faster, more clarity around what the pricing is on that payment, and also ensure that Benny knows when that'll settle within a short period of time, not days, but hours. Uh, it will be a huge improvement to how payments are processed in the market, and I think it would be a great win for all of us. Uh, the thing that's really critical here is critical mass, actually. So today, uh, SWIFT has about 70 participants in this initiative, but they really need hundreds, if not thousands, of their members to make this a real global reality to our customers. That being said, it has to start on a phased approach, so it'll have its true value when more members join. And so how do you envision the future of transaction banking? I think the future of transaction banking uh, in the wholesale space for our corporate customers, both large cap and mid cap, uh, is going to feel much like what we as consumers experience today. Many of our customers are consumers themselves, so they're expecting us to have the modern conveniences that they have in the retail side in their offices and in, the, in their wholesale uh, experiences. So let me give you an example. Um, we have a mobile application that our customers use around the globe. And what we've seen in the last two years is that our volumes have doubled uh, to the point in which the value of those payments through the mobile channel has reached $100 billion. Uh, it's quite a staggering number, especially when you consider one of the largest payments that we've had has been over $1 billion. It wouldn't be normal and natural to think that this is being done on a mobile phone, but in fact it is. So the direction of travel is clearly quicker, faster, easier ways to interact with our corporate customers as we do with the consumers. So all of this uh, movement towards mobile payments actually is allowing us to consider real-time payments for our corporate customers. 
Um, with that comes advanced opportunities for our customers. We're helping them grow in other markets, whether it's finding new suppliers or new customers or even new employee sources around the world and paying them in these different countries and currencies in a real-time manner. However, as a bank, I think it's important to say that new technologies also expose us to new risks. And it's our responsibility to ensure that these platforms have risk mitigation around them to ensure our customers' payments get where they're supposed to get and nothing has uh, compromised this along the way. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Diane. Thank you, Joy. My pleasure.